good morning ladies and gentlemen it is my pleasure to welcome you all on behalf of bharat exhibitions to this cto panel discussion on future of wireless i'm delighted to welcome dr vim sweldens president wireless division alcatel lucent who travel all the way from us to address this panel discussion it is my pleasure to welcome our distinguished panelist shri jagbe singh director networks atel Shri Malikarjun Rao, CTO Airsel; Shri Ashwini Kilan, CTO MTS; Shri Chinmay Mitra, CTO Unior. Also, would like to welcome our panel moderator, Kunal Bajaj, Managing Director, Analysis Mason, India. Kunal, I will not take much of time now. Over to you. You can start the panel discussion. Thank you. So, without much further ado, why don't we dig straight into the presentation by Wim? Uh, Would you, uh, you. The floor is all yours. My name is Wim Sweldens. I lead the wireless division in Alcatel Lucent. And as we just introduced, we're having this forum here called the Future of Wireless. And we're doing it right here in India. I am convinced there is a day in the future where there will be two billion people watching a live sport event, but not on their TV. they will be watching it on their mobile device that in my mind is the future of mobile network is there a better way to build mobile networks going forward is there a way that doesn't require this much power doesn't require that many towers and would unlock the technology as well as the business models for rural areas and people excluded from the digital economy today and we are here today to share with you that we have found a solution for this and that is what we call light radio now let me tell you a little bit about what light radio is you may have seen some of the headlines but let me walk you through the different components of technology that we have put together in order to make this happen because the key insight that helps us address the challenges is that we fundamentally change the architecture of mobile networks which today as we all know is based on a base station architecture no. a big base station sitting at the bottom of these big towers so what we've decided to do is to challenge ourselves to come up with an architecture that doesn't require to have a base station at that location now how can we do that it's a combination of those three technologies first of all we have developed this device we call it the light radio cube and what it is it's an active antenna element in essence what it is if you see this little golden piece in the front it's an antenna this actually is an antenna for the upper bands that will be used in india and we have integrated all of the radio technology that typically is part of a remote radio or typical part of a base station we've we've disaggregated it we've made it very small and combined it with the antenna into a unit that not only is very small but also is very light one of the reasons why it's called light radio and because it's light and because it's small it's easy to deploy you can deploy it by itself you can group them in a race you can put them on macro site towers you can put them on the side of buildings you can put them on land posts and billboards you can put them almost anywhere you want reusing the existing civil infrastructure that exists one of the key benefits of the light radio cube and then the the other part of a base station the digital part the baseband processing part We've decided to really look at architectures that much more centralize this. That take broadband, I'm sorry, baseband processing and allow it to do much more in a cloud-like fashion, much more in a telco operated environment. So and we and we use technology called system on chip technology, base base station on chip technology that we are co-developing, co-creating with our silicon partner called Freescale. so we can in software run 2g 3g and 4g network much more in a pooled based band fashion connected to radio elements now you may say this is a fascinating vision it's going to take forever to get there i mean and how do we really do this and how do we take the <coughs> networks that we have today and that obviously we need to continue to build out and how do we evolve them to light radio actually we have an answer for that as well because solving that problem how to get there is just as hard as 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 coming up with the architecture and the technology in the first place 
we have a roadmap that shows you how you can take today's LTE technology, which of course is still very much a macrocellular traditional architecture technology, and step by step evolve that to the introduction of active antenna array element, to the introduction of virtualized control, to the introduction of baseband pooling, and the ability to actually take that radically new architecture and use it to run LTE networks much more efficiently, but also to run 2G, 3G, and 4G networks at the same time. And I'm happy to say here that as Alcatel Lucent, we are making very good progress in both of these technologies. We have more than 20 operators in the world who have adopted our small cell technology and are following this path with us. We have over 65 trials with LTE. Many of them are in India, many of them in the Asia region, many of them with the TDE technology. We have five new contracts on LTE just in last quarter, and we are I mean, one of the, the, the number two players in LTE market share today. And we also know that LTE is not just a radio technology. It's an end-to-end -end IP network capability that allows you to bring broadband services to residential as well as to mobile users, as well as to find new ways of using broadband. I'm happy to share that we're getting tremendous reactions across the world from our light radio announcement. The reason why we're here today is to really have a conversation with India and with Indian operators around how do we take light radio, light radio, LTE, and small cell technologies and use it to address this phenomenal opportunity around the future of wireless that we have right in front of us here in India. With that, I'd like to thank you very much. Great. Thank you so much, Wim. I think that was an excellent uh, launch pad and an overview for the discussion that we're going to have now. Uh, I know you've just sat down, so to take a sip of that water, because what we'll do is uh, start off with a quick question with you, and I think we'll open up to everyone else right after that. Um, you know, I think the biggest, uh, you know, the biggest challenge for India, like you mentioned today, is a very recent launch of 3G, uh, LTE, potentially later, maybe amongst one of the world's first uh, countries, especially on the TDLT side. Uh, you know, from your experience uh, in working with operators globally, uh, what would you say are, are the key challenges that they're seeing for data, given that they have a lot more years of experience than we do? And therefore, what's the key message you know, to, to all of our colleagues here, the CTOs who are up here on the panel? So I would say, I mean, there's a couple of key challenges. I mean, uh, I think that there is, in every country in the world, including here in India, a really pent-up demand for mobile data uh, uh, usage. I mean, uh, I know there's somewhat of a debate around it, but I think there's really an end user interest in using more data, in using more data-driven services. And I think as we build out the networks, you will see a very rapid adoption of that technology. I see that around the world, and I expect the same thing here in India. Now, that will bring a number of challenges with it. I mean, uh, so first of all, because of the explosion of data, we're going to need, I mean, all the different um, uh, pieces of spectrum we can get. We're going to need a combination of 3G and 4G technologies in order to deal with the demand. And we're going to need to build networks that really can dramatically reduce the cost of ownership of, of, of um, running mobile networks, particularly the, the, the data aspect of it. So, so reducing cost of running mobile data networks is a number one priority. The other one is that it's, it's great to see uh, fantastic data growth on your network, but it's terrible if that data growth doesn't come hand in hand with revenue growth. Then it's just a challenge. Then it's not really an opportunity. And it's a challenge that we've seen in other countries, including the US. I mean, um, but I think we are now coming to find ways to address that challenge, to look for new monetization opportunities, to introduce way to do differentiated management of traffic, to combine it, I mean, think back of the Cricket uh, World Cup, to combine it with content, with applications, with education, with entertainment, and bundle that as services to be offered to end users. So I think that is a tremendous opportunity to really look at the revenue side.
So Gabriel, why don't we start with you? I'm gonna put you on the spot. Uh, what do you believe, you know, from your perspective and where we are in the market stage today and the maturity of the market, what's the biggest both business and technical challenges that you're currently facing? The biggest challenge if we take uh, in terms of the network OPEX and uh, CAPEX, I'm not that much uh, sort of, you know, like uh, they are almost at par with the industry and uh, other countries. But today we are reached to the stage where the tariff are the bottom, uh, I would say the lowest. Beyond this, going down on the tariff is actually there's no business case for the even the operator who are there for 10, 15 years in this market. So we are reached to the stage where we can't reduce the price or the network operation costs below this. We are reaching uh, more and more deeper towards the uh, um, coverage in the uh, country. As you go more deeper, you are actually having the issues of not having the power, not having the good infrastructure over there. Your cost is actually going up rather than coming down, and especially the network operations cost. And that's what is killing the operators right now. In addition to that, the another burden came last year because the spectrum prices. You're not getting any more further spectrum, so you can't actually keep putting more and more capacities on the same towers. Mm -hmm. So you are also forced to have the split the sides to create the capacities. That means increasing the network OPEX. So I think the bigger pain for the operators today, even the operator after having the maturity of 10, 15 years of the operations, is the network OPEX. And if we can somehow control that, I think we can have the case to fight and offer more and more maybe broadband services, data services, and reach to the vision of having the wireless connection to everyone in India, and especially in the rural and the villages. So I would say this is the biggest challenge for us, how do we optimize, and uh, if I can take one more minute, I think in terms of the efficiency from the operator side, this country has been always on the lead in terms of having the infrastructure sharing. This is the country where we started having the outsourcing of the services, networks, which never did uh, in any part of the world. This country started first sharing the towers, sharing the, you know, increasing the tenancy, sharing the fiber network. So everything, whatever is possible, actually is being done by the operators community. So it's not that operators are not working hard to get the efficiency out of the ground, but I think beyond a point, we are also now finding difficult that how do we further reduce the network OPEX to be competitive in the market, to offer the more and more better service to the customer, better data rate, more broadband services, and have the deeper penetration in the country. Mr. Rao, I guess from your perspective, as a slightly younger operator, um, are you seeing the same?